Uh, today is uh, May 28, 2010. My name is Andy Nyman. I'm an associate professor at LSU and the LSU Ag Center. I'm not speaking on behalf of them. Uh, this is just me. Uh, I don't have a crystal ball about what's going to happen with this, with this oil spill. Uh, I will talk about some research I've done in the past with uh, South Louisiana crude and uh, the dispersant that's being used. You know, my fear right now is kind of like when a hurricane's coming. You know, you know it's coming. You've been through it before. It could be bad. You're just going to wait and see. you got to wait and see how things turn out. You know, other oil spills, I'd point to this map and go, well, there's an oil spill here. And my finger would cover up the entire spill. Well, it's not the case any, uh, with, with this one. You know, I was... Uh, Tuesday, I was down at the mouth of the river, and I saw oil here in the South Pass, and over here, uh, up around Redfish Bay. Uh, I've heard, I've seen on the news that it's up on the islands. When it's when it's just one little dot, you're not too worried about the the shrimp and crabs and, and, and redfish, because you know there might yeah sure you might have lower production in this little spot for one for a year or so, but the populations from other pla animals from other uh, places will you know, offset that loss of production. With the spill coming into a larger area, we'll just have to wait and see how that turns out. Regarding the dispersant, the big, you know, it's a, it's a trade-off. You're trading, uh, exposing the entire water column to oil out here in the deep water, as opposed to letting it get on shore. And there's just so much oil this time that we're still getting oil on shore, even though we're dispersing it. And, uh, uh, we think we have more oil getting onto the shoreline and the intertidal environments if we didn't use the dispersant. On the other hand, um, the benefit is that that dis assumes the dispersed oil doesn't get to the shoreline and the intertidal habitats. Because the dispersed oil, uh, we've seen in some uh, experiments, is more toxic than undispersed oil. I'll try to walk you through this stuff. day one, day seven, a month, and six months later. These all represent where we had no oil. And see this figure down here? This means that uh, there's uh, nothing, no response. This is a, a, short, a core exit product, a cleaner though, not a dispersant, uh, 9580 I believe. And this is a dispersant that they're using now, 9500. Bar right here represents no oil and no chemical added. And so you see the, the survival, uh, don't worry about the units here, just the 1.5 all the way through, high survival of this fish over six months. Um, but look if you add just the cleaner, or just, with, we're at the, just the dispersant. Just the dispersant with no oil reduces survival you know, to about 30%. Even a week later, it's still reduced. A month later, statistically, there's no difference there. Uh, so it took a month for the dispersant alone to become non-toxic in this experiment to this fish. With South Louisiana crude added to it, you can see here now South Louisiana crude with no chemical added after one day, uh, you know, reduced survival down, not 1.5 anymore, down around 1.2 or so. And, but after a, a month, we're detecting no effect on survival of this fish with just South Louisiana crude. But look at the dispersant. Survival's half of just with dispersed oil. And here, these were these were not these were marshes we made in the lab. We went out and took this is a fresh marsh uh, uh, situation. Took fresh marsh soils, put them in these pretty big uh, flasks about this big, and, and made little marshes. Didn't have any plants in them, just the soil. And uh, added water, and actually the, they became little floating marshes, just like we have out in the real world. And we added oil to them uh, to make an oil spill about 75% cover up with mud in there. And what we do is that, say we wanted to do an experiment on day one, we'd have to destroy that. We'd have to take all that out and spread it out and split it up so we could do the chemical test and the toxicity test. And we had other ones that we kept going. You know, after a month, after a week, we destroyed another set and did a round of chemistry and toxicity testing. After a month, we did another round. And after six months, we did the last round. Does this take into consideration like weather conditions or anything else like that? No, this, this all that is uh, all that is uh, was not included. This was in the lab. You know, not too hot, not too cold. Probably about seventy-five degrees most of the time. 
no wind to help speed up the biodegradation, mm -hmm. don't have any wave action. So, uh, not, uh, so I don't know how it compares to the real world. Uh, the microbes who actually biodegrade, you know, eat this stuff, they're really temperature, temp temperature sensitive. The warmer they are, the faster they crank through it. So I'm thinking in the summer, it would work faster than here in this, this uh, laboratory experiment. But the assumption is, you know, when we use a dispersant off, offshore, is that the dispersed oil does not get up in here. So hopefully that's going to be true. And that's outside my area exp expertise. I'm unfamiliar with the... That was with the small fish. And you see, and, that, and, and look at this column over here. Look, uh, this column over here. This is with a tiny crustacean, a Daphnia, uh, uh, you know, very tiny, think of a tiny shrimp type thing. It was more sensitive, the same pattern applied, uh, you know, no oil, no chemical, you know, there's our survival, nice, throughout the experiment. Uh, South Louisiana crude is toxic, and uh, I mean, the dispersant alone is toxic, and dispersant and oil are even more toxic uh, than just the oil alone. Uh, but the fish is more robust, uh, stronger, more resistant to that toxicity than this tiny little crustacean. And that's the best model I have to go with on, say, shrimp. This is a little tiny worm that lives in the mud. Um, a coronamid larva turns into a fly for during some adult uh, part of life. It's a little tiny red worm that lives in the mud. Uh, you see, it's really sensitive to crude oil. I mean, it, its survival, uh, was fine only where we had uh, no chemical uh, at first. Any, any cleaner was bad, the dispersant was bad, oil was bad, and it wasn't until six months later that you start to see some survival with the South Louisiana crude alone. And with the South Louisiana dispersant, there's uh, no survival even after six months. It's a shrimp food. That's why you care about worms. Yeah. Yeah. So you're saying, yeah. you're saying that it probably won't be any more worms? If yeah, well, that's one. That's one thing I got to clarify here. This is the worst case scenario because what we're having here, you know, we took the oil, we had enough oil to every one of these things to make like a 75% oil spill on the top of the marsh, and then we took this, that same amount of oil, dispersed it, and put it in there. So this is none of the benefits of dispersion. The benefit of dispersion is you're spreading it out and reducing the concentration, and so that. You know, hopefully you'll get the numbers down, the concentration down enough that it's not toxic. So I don't, uh, we, we didn't have enough money to do that stage. I'm actually going to try to propose getting that now. But the, the surprising thing to me was that six months later, even after, you know, uh, a lot of uh, biodegradation of South Louisiana crude, even after that dispersants had time to be biodegraded, it's still toxic. Um, yeah, and that's this is when you take out and you add a new worm to it. The worm died within a, I think it was a 48-hour test, a couple of days. So that's that's uh, that's the possibility of what we're looking at. Well, I'll just tell you about this part. With when we took these little, little marshes apart to do the toxicity testing, we also did chemical testing on them. We did four different chemical tests for petroleum hydrocarbons, ranging from the the simplest, which is you put in a solvent, you shake it up for an overnight, and then you take out that solvent, and you let the solvent evaporate and just weigh the amount of oil left. That's really, I, I can even do that one. But we also uh, did some up to the most elaborate, using a gas chromatograph with mass spectrometry, focusing on 43 specific hydrocarbons that have been selected as a way of monitoring biodegradation and evaporation. We cannot, using those chemical tests, you don't see any difference between the crude oil and the dispersant. Yet we see, you know, tremendous differences biologically in the survival. So our chemical tests were not able to show us what the animals are showing us. I'm going to have to watch the tape to <laughs> understand how this shit, but I know that I'm getting pissed off. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but you know, like I said, this is the worst case scenario.